Hey friends. So, um, yeah, I wanted to do like this vlog series, um, this week, but that didn't happen. <laughs> um, so tomorrow is, uh, my induction date. Um, my doctor decided to induce me at 39 weeks because otherwise if he didn't do it now, he wouldn't be my delivering doctor, which I really want him to be my delivering doctor. So, um, yeah, it was either now or after Christmas. And I'm actually due the 22nd, which is Tuesday. So it's not like a big change. So I'm going in tomorrow, Friday, which is the 17th. And hopefully I have a baby this weekend. Sorry, I look gross. Uh, I was playing with Carter and um, giving him all the cuddles and love in the world because he's not going to be an only child very soon. So... We ended up falling asleep together, so I look a little rough and woke up. And now I'm just having my little wound time. Um, yeah, I'm excited, nervous, a whole array of emotions right now. I can't believe I'm having a second child. And, like, I felt like it took forever, but we are here and we'll have this baby soon. So, um, I'll give you guys a belly check. Don't mind all the stretch marks and ugliness. <laughs> but here's the bump. It's bumping. It's bumping. That's from when I got my belly button pierced the second time. And my body rejected it and pushed it through. It looks super gross because I'm pregnant. But naturally, it doesn't look that gross. I didn't end up with that many stretch marks. Still got the ones from last time, and then just added some new ones on this side. Woohoo! All right, but um, tomorrow I am a crazy lady. Most people would be off and chilling and having the time of their life for the last day. Um, no, I'm going to work <laughs> and I'm going to work until like two o'clock. Then I'm going to go eat my last big dinner and I'm going to the hospital at five. Hopefully, they said if um, there's a lot of uh, people who come in before me, ooh, if a lot of people come in before me who actually are further along, they're going to take them first and then just hold me off and call me in when they have room for me. So hopefully, not that many people go to the world because <laughs> I kind of want to just go in. I am so uncomfortable at this point. It is the hardest getting out of bed. And then Carter still wants to be carried. Like, he must know that, like, I'm having this baby soon because he's been very babyish. Like, he wants me to carry him everywhere. He used to be so independent. He used to get out the bed himself, do everything himself. And now he's just looking at me like, oh, well, my mama. <laughs> and then also, I feel like he's about to go through a lot of transitions right now because currently he was in his infant room at school infant older infant room so it's like older infants from like eight months to 14 months he's now in um our young toddler's room which is 14 13 months excuse me until like 20 something months and he's just having a really rough transition or he's just putting on a show for my benefit because everybody's like oh he's fine he's fine and then i'll show some pictures up on the screen and uh, they're like, he's fine. He's doing really good. But every time I walk past the room, it's like he senses me or he knows I'm looking through the window because he's like laying on the floor crying. He won't play with other kids. And I'm just like, no, oh, my baby. <laughs> my baby's so sad. So, um, yeah, that's been like a big thing right now for him. Um, me, I'm just really excited to just have my baby focus on baby chase um and make sure he's doing good and healthy and keep my eyes on carter too at the same time i will be out of work for three months so this will be my time to heal uh their dad is going to take two weeks off to spend with me at home and um help me during this recovery time because last time i think i never took like having a baby serious so when 
I had the baby, he kind of left a couple of days after I had Carter. And, like, I was just doing everything by myself. And it was a, just a lot, but I didn't want to burden people and I didn't want to tell them that I wasn't okay so I just pretended like I was okay which I feel like what led to such a hard depression postpartum depression with Carter so um that's why I was like I'm gonna need your help I'm gonna be a lot more vocal than I was last time so don't think this time I'm just being really mean and bossy it's just I don't want to put myself in a bad spot mentally now that I have two kids relying on me so just making sure him being there and supporting me it is what is best. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. Ooh, he's very active tonight. He must know he's coming out soon because he is tearing it up tonight. I'm also very, very nervous right now that my water might break. Um, I know that sounds crazy. But I like the idea of going and being induced because it's like I walk in, I have a plan, I know what's going on, I know what's supposed to happen because I was induced last time. And now it's like if my water breaks, it's like my water never broke before. <laughs> I don't know this process. And that's another thing people who like have multiple pregnancies or um, multiple times having kids, it's like people think you're like prepared and you know everything but it's like it can be different each time like you can go in have a natural birth but and water break everything happened naturally or you can go in there and be induced you can go and have a c-section so each time is different and you don't know what to expect each time so it's kind of nerve-wracking and it's also kind of scary because you're like I've, I've never had to deal with this kind of birth so how do you handle these kind of births so that's what I'm scared of to having a like natural flowing water breaks, go to the hospital kind of situation. So I'm so glad because I was due like a couple of days before Christmas and I thought they would try to induce me on Chris. Well, on his due date and his due date is like, what, three days before Christmas. So I'm glad my doctor was like before then because I couldn't imagine spending Carter's like second Christmas in the hospital and not being with him because that would probably break my heart even more and um so i'm just excited that i will at least be home by christmas to spend it with my baby and my family so that is the biggest plus and upside to being induced tomorrow so again i'm gonna keep this one short and i will check back in with you guys tomorrow have a good night chase say good night good night <laughs> and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Hey friends. So I am in the hospital now. Oh, that's my blood pressure being checked. Um, so um I didn't get my induction on Friday like I thought. They were busy and um they had me wait to come in on Saturday. So I came in today at five something <laughs> and like five forty, five or five fifty. Um, it took a while to get here because Carter was not having, <sighs> sorry, it's not having us leave him. So, um, currently, um, update on what's been going on is I got my epidural around, like, nine something. Um, and I'm feeling good. No pain. Just still feel tingling in my legs from like the epidural work and everything. Um, I had a little problem with the epidural taken. This is the first time that happened last time. Uh, it took it simply. Now this time, like um, my blood pressure dropped and I got really lightheaded and I felt dizzy. So they had to come in here and give me uh, medicine to help with my blood pressure being really low. That made me really groggy and tired, so I fell asleep for quite a bit. Um, woke up. Yeah, so just waiting for the progression of baby. Oh, when I got here, uh, they checked my cervix. I was dilated four to five, and they just checked it again at like 10 something, and I was five to six, so it's going slow. So hopefully they'll come check me again really soon, and we will be making progress. Um, yeah, right now just chilling, 
watching some TV and just waiting to see what happens. Hey friends, I'm back with an update. As you can see, I have had my baby. All right, so um, the last 24 hours have been crazy. So um, I think last time I updated you guys was on Friday night. So um, I did go in on Saturday. I made the mistake of waiting until three o'clock to eat. I went in at five. Um, when I got in at five, they checked me in and everything. Um, got in the room. They asked me all my like pre-screening questions. Um, then when they checked my cervix, I was already dilated five centimeters. So they were like, "Oh, this induction is going to be quick." Uh, but then also they noticed during the check-in of my cervix that his head was not down where it needed to be. So then next, the doctor came in and he um, did a check with an ultrasound and he saw that um, Chase was actually crooked, like crooked, I said crooked, crooked, and his arm was where his head was supposed to be. So they didn't want to um, heavily induce me yet because um, they didn't want him to come out incorrectly, which would put him at risk and everything. So they were giving me low doses of Pitocin all night to help with um, him getting into position. Um, so that was like at eight o'clock when they checked me and told me all this. So I went the whole night, um, uh, got my epidural, totally fine, no pain, everything was going great. Um, then at seven o'clock in the morning, they came in and they let me know that, um, that they were gonna do an ultrasound again to see if he was in position and if busting my water would help get him into position even better. If it didn't, then they were gonna have to take me in for an emergency C-section. If it was then, if he was in position, then I was good to just give natural birth. Um, so they bust my water and everything. His head actually fell into place perfectly. It just was too high up, so they just had to wait for gravity to do its work and just have him keep sliding down. Um, after they bust my water, like literally 30 minutes after, I was experiencing the worst back pain ever. Like I was laboring in my butt and it just felt like I had to poop so bad. So I kept like screaming that I had to poop and they kept checking me and my cervix was more and more dilated. Um, I was like eight or seven and, but yet he still was still a little too high up. And um, the anesthesiologist came in, possibly said that wrong. I know I did came in um to check uh to check my epidural um they ended up having to give me some stronger medicine because it was just not working because they said the back is the hardest place for the epidural to reach it reaches good in the front and in the legs but it's really hard in the back so finally they get me numb i take a nap for like an hour or two so it's like uh 10 something and i wake up they have me sit up with my legs crossed leg, they said this will help with gravity and help Chase just naturally flow downwards. I sat like that for like five or ten minutes and then I started screaming because I said I had to push. Like I was like the urge to push was extreme. At that point, the, uh, the normal epidural they gave me had worn off in my legs. I was able to move everything and I wasn't that numb. So I called the nurse and I told the nurse... Um, so I was interrupted. Um, um, I kept telling them like I need to push, like I have the urge to poop or push. So then um, the nurse came in and she put my legs in the sternum things, and she was like, "All right, let's do a practice push and see how you're doing." And I started pushing, and she told me to stop pushing. She said she had to call the doctor because Carter's, uh, not Carter, Chase's head was right there. So um, so then next. I'm like sitting there trying to cross my legs and like resist the urge to push and it was just super hard to not push because I needed to push like I could feel it it was like burning like I had to do it so then finally they get everything set up they get the room set up for uh, Chase delivery and completely different from uh, Carter's birth um, it took three pushes and he was out literally three pushes and he comes flying out screaming they laid him on my chest 
Um, his dad cut the umbilical cord. It was just a really good time. It was completely different from Carter's birth because uh, when Carter came out, they had to use the forceps on him and he wasn't, uh, he didn't cry immediately when he came out. So they were trying to get him to cry so he didn't get to be put on my chest until after he was cleaned off and everything. So um, Chase was a different experience and it was wonderful. It went by so quickly. Like that was the quickest birth that I've ever seen. It, it, granted, I've only seen mine and my best friends, but that was, it was pretty quick. Three pushes and he was out. And then um, he's been just chilling. He's been a really chill baby. Jeff chilling, really loves his mommy snuggles. Um, got most of his checklist done so we can go home soon. So we will most likely be going home before Christmas Eve, woohoo. And um, I'm just super excited that he came out all healthy and beautiful and amazing that he is. Um, yeah, this is, we just made it 24 hours not that long ago, so we're doing good. We're doing really good, really good recovery. He's got most of his checklists checked off. Now we're just waiting for some more uh, lab stuff to come back for him. And then we have to rescreen for his jaundice and we will be going home tomorrow. So yeah, um, it was, it's been a crazy time. Woo! Sorry, I'm gonna drop my phone. Um, they have new, uh, mother and child rooms and this room is very swanky with like a lot of nice things this is his uh little bassinet thing that he sleeps in and it goes down so i can get him easily and then it can rotate and turn so it's really awesome and then it goes up and down it's this is like one of the things which i like i could have to take home like they're like, all right, you can take the baby home and just roll that out to the car, too, because this thing is pretty freaking awesome. Really awesome having the bedside uh, bassinet thing. It's easy to get them in and out. Um, it adjusts to many levels. It fits perfectly right over the bed. It's super nice, and it has, like, the pockets to hold the diapers, the wipes, the blankets, everything at your disposal right here. That's one on that side, and... That one on the other side. But right now, just doing snuggles. He got circumcised today, so he's not very happy. But it's okay. It's okay. He's just one of Mama's snuggles. And um, I guess that's going to be the end of this video. But I will see you guys soon and give you updates when I'm at home, how everything's going. And yeah, I will see you later. Bye, fans, fans.